Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're going to be working on our old shopping basket. This is a pattern I took from an antique basket that I have at home. Uh, people used to take it shopping with them. The material that you're going to need in the cut pattern is as follows. You're going to need number 10 round, cut two pieces 34 inches long, six pieces four and a half inches long. From number 8 round, cut three pieces nine and a half inches long. Number six round, cut 32 pieces, 24 inches long. You're going to need number four round for the weavers. Dye about 60 foot of two different colors, so it'd be 60 foot of one color and 60 foot of another. You're also going to need number four round left natural for your weavers. You're going to need four one and a half by three and a half inch ears with a notch on it, and also some florist type wire. To get started, um, you're going to take your small pieces that are four and a half inches long. That's a piece here. I've already started my layout to save some time. You're also going to need a cutting board to cut on or to uh, pry on, I should say. But here, um, to get started, I want you to come in here and use an awl. An awl works really well. It has a sharp point. Get in the middle of your four and a half inch piece and push through. Work that piece through and staying in the center very carefully, just open that hole, that slit that you've made just a little bit like so. And then you're going to slide your three pieces, these are my three long pieces, I'm going to slide them in. And sometimes they're going to fit tight. There they go. Now before I did that, I put my three pieces together and I put a from here to my first mark is two inches, and I did the same over here. There's a, a pencil mark, and it's two inches wide. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to draw this one. I have all six of my pieces on here, and I'm going to draw this piece across here. I'm finished with my cutting board. I think you'll be able to see better on the table here. I want this edge on that line that we made, and I'm going to bring down another one. So I have two left in the middle, and those I'm going to center. So this is my beginning layout. It looks just like that. Taking a natural piece of your number four round, get it undone here. Well, there we go. I'm taking a long length of number four round, and I'm taking the end, and this is where my slit is in here, and I'm putting the end into the slit. Then I'm going to weave over the next piece. These two pieces I'm going to weave together, come around very tight, and pull this whole piece tight, come around, and weave over to this side. It's just an over-under weave, but it's important that you pull that very tight. Take out another piece of your number four round. We're going to do some chase weaving. And I'm, here's where I started my first one. I'm going to come back to the left and put the end again in that slit and weave over my first one in an under. I'll be opposite weave of my first weaver. My last, my this weaver must never pass my first weaver. That's what chasing is. And I'm going to weave this around, come back and get this piece and weave it around. Always keeping your front weaver in front, never letting the second one pass it, and pack these in very tight, pulling them very tight. I want everything, especially up in here, real tight. I'm going to do two rows. There's my two, oh, I need to come around here. There's my two rows. Coming back to my first weaver. Now I'm going to split these two apart, weave between them, come across, and pull this one over. These need to soak. I forgot to tell you that, but these need to soak a good couple of hours uh, to make them real pliable so they'll work for you. Come across here. I'm going to be over and under following my same pattern. Pull these in very tight. Pull this one apart. Come between them. Now I'll be back on the right weave. I should be opposite in here. Come back here, and this one's going to follow. This is my second weaver. Again, I'm going to pull this tight, the one I've gone between, and weave around these. 
separate them into thirds and keep right on going. At this point, whoops, I need to do this side now. This is my first weaver. Dividing here, again pulling these three pieces over, pulling them apart. Pack that weaving down in there very tight, just as tight as you can get it. Come to the other side and then keep right on going. Now it'll be easier to continue weaving. I'm going to weave this out until I have it woven out as far as I can, right out to the edge, and I've already got one to that point. Here's what your base should look like. It's coming apart a little bit. Let me go back and fix this weave. See how it's all pulled tight? It's laying flat. I kept it flat as I worked. Um, everything is looking real good at this point. It's nice and tight. Now, the hard part. You're going to take your 32 pieces that are 24 inches long. I have mine tied here. And you're going to stick them in here. You may want to put a point on the end so they'll travel. And they're going to go in here. Um, I need one over here. I may have to come in here and open this up and push this spoke over a little bit to get that piece in there. I have another one that goes in here. So again, push it over. And these may fall out, so you just keep working them and putting them back in. I need one on each side of all my corner pieces. And if they don't go in good, open it up, use that awl. Be careful with the awl, it does have a sharp point on it. Put it in there. This will take you a little bit of time. Push them down in as far as you can get them to go. And you're going to need quite a bit of table space to work this pattern. Right here I can see I'm going to need to pull that spoke over. Make room for my new additional spoke in here. I need one again. I need uh, one on each side of this spoke. Again, I need my awl in there. Pull it over. It's nice and wet. If it dries out while you're working, take a minute and let it soak a little bit of water up to get it pliable again. I need to do the same thing over on this corner. Open this up here. need to open this one so I have to get one in next to there. Okay, I've got to pull it again. Okay, I have another piece that's, that has this portion all done. Let me get that out and I'll show you what it should look like. Now I have this piece already laid out. It'll be much easier to talk you through this. You're going to need two pieces on, on your coming out from each of your spokes around each corner here. Again, repeat it on this side. Your two spokes here are going to have two, one piece each, two per side, coming from the center. Can you see the layout of that? Okay. Now, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come and get my two colors. And my two colors I chose were blue and peach. I have a dark blue here and a peach. You can choose any colors you like for your complementary color going up the sides. And I have one came out. Just push it back in. I need to get up here close. I'm going to take my long piece of natural that's left and simply cut off the shorter piece. And we're going to triple twine. Insert the, my, what I have here is my peach piece. I'm going to insert it there and then my blue piece right next to it. So out of three consecutive spokes, I have my three colors. Taking the one on the left, which happens to be my natural, I'm going to go over to behind one and pull that down real tight. Again, taking my left piece, my far left, go over to behind one. Again, 
my left over two behind one. Treat each of the spokes coming out as individuals. Work this pattern all the way around. Because I have 32 spokes, it's going to allow me to make a beautiful spiral pattern going up the side of the basket. Now I know this is kind of hard to, the first row is kind of, there's a lot to handle on this basket. So just be patient, take your time, work, the, the ba the work it around the basket. When you get that first row done, and I know I don't have mine done yet, but when you get your first row done, you can pick it up, start arching these away from you to create the sides of the basket. So work at keeping these arched. Don't bring them straight up. Give them a nice slant and pull everything tight as you twine. Pull this tight around. Go ahead and work up the sides of the basket and I'll show you the next step. You really need control and work on your control as you work up the sides of the basket. As you can see over here, um, it's just a slight slant as you go up, adding new pieces as you, as you go, and then you get this beautiful spiral with the different colors going up the side of your basket. When you have six inches, when this is six inches long, you're going to end it. Now on my piece, just pretend like these aren't in yet, but we're going to come over here and to end it, um, I'm going to end it on the same side I started it. Come in here and just snip off the long pieces here as I do my last um, tw uh, twining, I'm simply going to insert them back inside. Now that you have them all, the ends cut off, set your basket up and take a screwdriver or a, a packing tool or something and come in here and just pull all of these down so everything is put in tight. Then you're going to put in your handle or your ear. I already have three of mine in to save time. Look on the bottom of your basket and find this spoke right in here. Um, this is your your first added four and a half inch spoke and it should have two spokes next to it. Follow those two up and that is where this one's going to go and that's true on the placement of all four of them. I'm simply sticking this down in here. My ear has a nice little points on the end of it. Work it down gently. We don't want to break the ear. Work it down in there gently. And you can see it's going to grab the twining on top where those notches are. Push it down a little bit more and see how that grabbed? That's what's going to hold those ears in place. Give it a little push and adjust it if you need to. Okay. When that part's done, you have all four of your ears in, you're going to need your needle nose pliers and come in here and you're going to crimp right where, crimp each spoke all the way around right at the top of your twining. And I've already done that, so go ahead and finish that step. This is a Japanese um, border that we're putting on this top here and it's, it's really easy to do, it's quick. Um, we've done some of the basics to this pattern before. Taking any spoke, starting anywhere, go behind one and to the outside. Simply work that pattern all the way around the basket. You're also going to have to work around your little handles, your little ears here. Work those in. Behind one, all the way, and then to the outside. Okay, I'm going to switch baskets because I have this part done on the next basket. I am ready to end this one here. Now if you notice on this one I didn't put my little ears in because I wanted to also tell you if you don't want to put this handle on you don't have to and you still have a nice little storage basket. Um, let me see I had one here. Well let me just take out one quickly and let me show you. When I finish when I'm coming back around here I have this is my last one to go in. It needs to go into the original I have a little hoop here from my very first spoke I put down and it simply slides in there. Step two. Now I'm going to take three pieces in my hand. The one on the far left I'm going over two and inserting it back to the inside. Over two to the inside. And you can work that pattern all the way around the basket. Into, or pardon me, over two to the inside. And when I pull this one back on the far right, it creates a little hole here and that's where I'm sticking that piece. 
So go ahead and finish that step. And again, I'm going to the other basket. And this is where I have it all done except for the last two pieces so I can show you where to insert them. And again, I'm going to have you just ignore the handle that I've started here. Now I'm back. I've inserted, so I have just two left. I'm going to go over two. My one here is already finished and already um, put in. This is my first spoke. That's one. And this would be my second one. So I know I'm going to go in right here and pull that. Now, because this is my last one and everything else is put back into the middle, I'm going to go over two and I'm going to go in and I have to be over these two right here. You'll see the two pieces and this is the only part that doesn't have a spoke coming out from it so it goes right in there. Okay, step three on this border is just a simple rolled border inside starting anywhere, taking the spoke to the left, go over the spoke on the right and down. Pick up the next one on the right, over and down. This is called a roll border. It makes a nice finishing touch to the inside of this basket. And I'm quickly going to finish it around. Over one and down. Okay, I'm going to take out one more pattern where I can show you how to end this one. On this one I have the rolled border all done except the very last piece so I can show you how to fit it in there. This is my last piece. This is my first piece right ahead of it. Simply pull that out a little bit and push that down in there and you've finished your rolled border. Come in here. Now don't get these too short when you do this trim because if you get it too short these are going to pop out so easy and they will not stay in. So give them a little bit of room to lay on the pieces of uh, spoke in front of them. Okay, and finish trimming that all the way around. Now on the handle, um, this is going to take a little bit of time. I've already done one side. You're going to need those two pieces that are 34 inches long from your number 10 round. Mark up 7 inches on each side. Here's my pencil mark. And following the arch, the natural curve of the reed is what we're going to do next. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be on the inside of my curve and I'm going to whittle this down. Now if it's nice and wet, if it's been soaking for an hour or so, it's going to whittle for you very easily. In fact, that came off just like butter. Come over to the other side and do the very same thing. I want this end to be thin, but I have to be careful now that I don't get it too thin. When I get out to the end of it, it almost needs to be like paper thin, really thin in there so that it'll lay up to itself real nicely and you won't have this bulk showing um, on our final handle wrap. Very gently pull this up around here using your fingers to get a nice arch on it and so it won't crack and break also. And then you have going to do that to the other side which I've already done and you have your two pieces coming up on themselves like that. Come over to your basket and insert them through your handle from the outside in and using a clothespin clamp them up like so. Other side, I'm just repeating. Now this is where the floral wire comes in handy and I'm going to take a length of it. This is called paddle wire here but any gauge, you know, 18, 20 gauge is a good size to use. I'm taking a length of it coming up here at the end and I'm going to twist this on very tight we're going to go ahead and leave the wire here permanently, so kind of do a neat job. I'm just putting a twist on the two ends on the other side. I'm going to bring it around a couple of times and get that nice and tight. And use that end. Make sure you leave a couple of long ends here and twist it again. You need to repeat it on this side also. Give myself, a, whoops, another length here. I should have cut that off first. It would have been easier before I took off my clothespin. Okay, I'm going to repeat it on this side. Leave these lengths hanging out because we're going to use them as we go ahead and continue on this handle. This handle is a challenge for you. I, it's, it's, um, I won't say real difficult, but it's going to be a challenge for you. <laughs> and I hope you choose to try it because you always need to learn new things. Okay, I have cut some pieces in here out of number four round. 
and I've cut about 13. I'm going to need between 12 and 13. Maybe sometimes you might even need 14. Come in here and we're going to take three lengths at a time. The length of these, by the way, is the length of my handle plus about three inches. This one's real long here. So the length of your handle plus about three inches, taking three at a time. I'm going to lay them and give them a little bit of length here, past what's going to be our, in, our final wrap. And I'm going to wrap around here to hold this with my floral wire. And again, I need that little end over here to wrap around. I'm going to work this around the basket like so and leaving a gap in here of about two to three inches. And I need to bring this piece over that tail of my handle and work it around. When I get to the other side, I'm going to, again, take that floral wire and catch it these ends over here. And I'm not worried about the length of the ends at this point. I'm going to go back later and cut them off. Wrap them around a couple of times. I've lost uh, my other end, so another way to do this is simply take the end of this floral wire, stick it through your couple of wraps here, and give it a tight pull. And that will hold it in also. Okay, come back to the other side. Again, taking three lengths of your number four round, lay them right next in here, so these are butted up, but they're all laying side by side, those three new pieces and wrap the floral wire around again and hold it in there tight. This one's getting short. I may have to start a new piece of floral wire, which is not hard to do. Just take another, just start another end over there. Now, this piece is wrapping right in here next to the first three, and I'm butting them all up tight, keeping them side by side, and working this piece all the way around wrapping it in between here all the way around to the other end of the handle and again when I get over here I'm going to come in here and fasten this around I need to repeat that another time with three more pieces and then if I still find I have a gap in here like this should fit three but perhaps because of the size, uh, the distance I left here, I may even have to take one piece and, and wrap it in there by itself around because we want these all to fit in tight like they do on this side. I've cut off my ends. I have everything fit in tight here. See what a nice wrap? It's a rope wrap that that makes in there. And my floral wire, I'm just going to make sure it stays in here. Secure it up there tight. Come in here now and I can get rid of some of this ends in here, and I'm simply going to come up here and cut these off now that I have everything secured in there. And we're going to do a final wrap. We need something to hide all of our work under here and to hold everything together. And you can use um, your dyed here. You could even put some dyed pieces in your handle to bring, you know, the, the flow of the colors up into your handle. Uh, you just can get real creative here. We need to take another piece, whether it's dyed or natural, and put a crimp on it, and lay this piece. This is for our final wrap in here. Lay this piece right next to the handle. Bring it around. I need to make sure, you need to make sure you get below that floral wrap because we need to hide that floral wire now. And bring this around. We need a long length. And you're going to wrap this tight. Keep everything pulled really tight. And make sure you soak your reed a long time because um, you don't want it to crack and break. And this piece is breaking just a little bit. It really should have been soaked, so maybe a little bit longer. Wrap all the way up to the top. Unloosen it. I think we've done that in another program where you unloosen it and stick the end of it uh, down back into about four rows of wrapping. And that's how you're going to end it. You're going to have to do this uh, four times, once at each handle edge here. And then finally you're going to come back in 
and just do some trim work. Oh, let me get that pulled through. Come back here with some sharp scissors and trim all this up even. Again, make sure it's real wet. Come in with sharp scissors and do and pull these or cut these ends off here so that they won't show. I've really enjoyed this 13 week series with you and I hope you've enjoyed it too. I look forward to seeing you in our next series. Bye bye till then.